going on everybody welcome back to the channel i am zachary smith uh it's been a while since i put out a video on this channel but like this is the time of year where i enjoy putting out the most content and i'm not gonna lie uh don't expect any type of consistency from me i'll be open i'll be honest about that uh just with everything else that i have going on very rare that i find the time uh to be able to put something out on here however during draft time i make the time uh i want to talk about terry and arnold today we're gonna to go through some film review of him some clips that i've cut up uh just on the surface six foot 196 as he converted safety uh top five at his position recruit when he was coming in uh either a four or five star depending on the site uh, that you were looking at there. Multi-sport athlete who was also set to play basketball, uh, but when he became a starting corner basically right away for them, uh, he's a redshirt sophomore, by the way, um, he he put basketball to the side just to focus on football. So uh, I love Terry and Arnold. Full disclosure, as you can tell by the th thumbnail as well, he is my CB1 of the class. And the reason I'm posting this video as of right now, uh, if you are not new, or I'm sorry, if you're new to the channel, not familiar with me personally, I'm a Steelers fan. Just came out today with Terry and Arnold talking at the Combine that he has met with the Steelers. Very glad that that is the case, of course. I mean, he's probably going to meet with most teams, but uh, should certainly be in play for them if for whatever reason he were to fall to 20. I don't necessarily think that that should be the case, although I know that I am much higher on him uh, than even people that are huge fans of him. Like I said, he's my CB1. He's also going to be certainly within the top seven or so players of the class in total for me. Um but yeah, I got some clips cut up. We'll take a look at him. I'll give you some reasons that I think that he is my CB1, why he finishes my number one guy. Although I will say another guy I'm going to have a video on the channel for, Quinion Mitchell definitely made a push. Uh, the more and more film that I was able to get out of him, uh, you know, going to Toledo, it was a little bit scarce at first. There was only one game that I had clips of up until the last week uh, when some more stuff got added to the drive that I have. So uh, definitely going to have a video on him as well. But yeah, Terry and Arnold, CB1 for me. Uh, let, let's take a look and we'll go through it. So, yeah, I just think like for me personally, the thing that I love about Terry Arnold, what sticks out to me is the fluidity. Um, you know, uh, there's very few prospects at the corner position that have come out in recent memory to me that are more fluid at the position, the way that he can rotate, it allows him to get in and out of that pedal. Um, you know, the change of direction that he has. I don't know, like, I mean, Pat Sertan is honestly the guy, like, another Alabama guy that comes to mind for me that, like, I, like, fell in love in terms of the hip fluidity prior to Terry and Arnold. Look at this pass breakup. I think that's his ability to just, you know, stay within the play. You're going to see a lot of, of, of run support plays made here as well. Um, you know, this game against Texas, look at the way that he's breaking down here. And, and honestly, that is one of the things, if I was looking at when watching him, where I was a little bit worried about. I think that if there's three things that I was pointing out in terms of a little bit of concern for Terry and Arnold at the next level, uh, tightening the pedal sometimes. Uh, I, I have some questions about zone coverage, you know, because this is like a prototypical man press corner. Seen him play outside and inside. Seen him do a lot of different things in man. But like there to me, and it's more so a question because we just haven't seen it. Um, you know, how is this game going to translate if it were to a zone defense? But like man heavy, Teams that play a lot of press man, I don't think there's any reason for concern there. And then the tackle technique, uh, not necessarily a willingness to do so. I think you're going to see him be willing to come downhill a ton. So it's not a, a concern with that, which is which is great because, you know, the willingness to do so is first and foremost. The technique you can work on. I think that we had similar concerns as Steelers fans with Joey Porter Jr. And as the season went on, you just saw him get better and better and better. Uh, you know, early in training camp, he was missing guys like Gunnar Osheski in one-on-one drills and stuff and tackling. You even saw it pop up early when he got onto the field. But as the season went on, was able to see him clean that up. And I think you're probably looking at a similar trajectory with Terry and Arnold. Here's another run play, you know, forcing it to the side, keeping things contained. Um, you know, he, he's really the one here to make sure he doesn't get outside on this. Just another, you know, solid rep. Look, look how it's just so sticky in coverage. You know, that's another thing. Like, I took some notes when I was watching him here, and we can just kind of go through those. Um, excellent proportional length, I mentioned, you know, six foot 196, really good base of power. Uh, elite explosiveness in and out of his breaks. The long stride recovery speed, which is interesting because I don't think he necessarily has excellent long speed, but because of the strides, it allows him to make up some ground there. Uh, patient and press man. Uh, can use his length to jam at the line of scrimmage in press man, and that's why he's so good in that area. The turnovers have been there. You know, he's got the ball skills, the timing, the ability to high point 
at the catch. Um, and then, you know, I talked about the run stuff a little bit already. You know, I think he's willing and capable and run supports. And, and what I see, you know, he didn't necessarily get a ton of reps in the slot, but I think he's capable of doing so. Uh, and, you know, for it seemed like the Steelers are anybody, you know, I mean, that nobody's to be upset with the versatility, but certainly there are teams I think that are going to covet it more. Um, and I think that the Steelers would be one of those. You see an interception here uh, on a batted ball. Just kind of right place, right time for him on that one. But, um, you know, hey, you got to. That, that's the way that luck goes sometimes. You know, you create your own luck with how good you are and how much you're around the ball. Look at him right here, shedding this block to be able to break up this screen here and shut it down behind the line of scrimmage. First guy there. Coverage sack on this one, you know primarily due to the coverage that he was put on the outside. Look at him again here, getting to the outside, making this thing go back in. There's just so much of these things, man. There's so much of these same things that pop up on film, the consistency in which he does it. Playing around the line of scrimmage here, flips the ball out, look at the pursuit. You know, a lot of other guys, they could have got sucked in here, not been able to get on the outside shoulder of that number 11 and been able to break off that block. Not Terry and Arnold on that play. Undercuts this one. I I mean, I don't love that throw. I don't love that decision. I believe it's Jackson Dart. I believe that's against Ole Miss, right? Um, you know, threw it into at least double coverage, almost triple coverage on that play. Terry and Arnold undercuts it. Um, yeah. But I mean, you know, again, there's not everybody's making that play. And then you look at the return as well. You know, there's that catch point being able to go up and break it up that I talked about as well. In the end zone, preventing a touchdown. Just the timing on those routes. Sticky stuff here. Look how long that play goes on, too, man. And he just, that wide receiver is creating so little separation, even with how long this play took to develop. Kicks to the outside, sheds the block, pushes the running back out of bounds, or receiver on an end around, I guess, out of bounds. Texas A&M game here. Again, you know, helping out and run support. Shutting things down at the line of scrimmage. There, There's a good, uh, this is good right here for the change of direction. Uh, I'll pause it so you can, you know, take another look at this. But the change of direction here on this play, I mean, he's going towards the middle of the field, switches, then gets to the boundary to break this up. Really good stuff. Another run play. Diagnosing it, getting in on it. Here we go against uh, Georgia in the SEC championship. Wasn't the first guy there, but helps clean things up. Certainly shows the willingness there. Great pass break up across the middle of the field there. That's on Lad McConkey, who's you know going to be maybe a first round pick. Certainly, I would think top forty for sure. Really good receiver. Awesome play, awesome play right there. Doesn't get fooled by it. You know that receiver's trying to carry that route and make it seem like the back's not taking the ball, and it is a pass play. Wasn't fooling Terry Narn or a lot of guys uh, for that matter, but Terry and the first guy there. Carson Beck had to, you know, pull that one down. Nothing went open. Mm. Yeah, this is, you know, another good matchup here with Lad McConkey. Takes him pretty much all the way across the field. 
Um, you know, obviously Terry had a little bit of help there, but that ball's not getting to McConkey on that anyway. I think this is the one that finishes it up. Yep, yeah, that'll do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, clearly, you know, one of my favorite players in this draft. Um, I'm super excited to see where he lands. I think there's a lot of real, like I, like I said, I think any team could use a player that brings what he brings to the table, but there are definitely certain teams that I'd be more excited about getting him in. Uh, I think Pittsburgh, <laughs> obviously, I want him here. Uh, I think they would make a ton of sense. I think Indy could be great. Uh, there's a lot of other teams, but, you know, those two certainly jump off the page. Um, but let me know what you guys think about Terry and Arnold. Let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know if you would like to see any specific players done in the future. Let me know who your CB1 is or how your CB rankings are. I'm always interested to see that, especially in this class. Like, I was talking to somebody. I almost wish the teams had to disclose that information afterwards because I just think there's just going to be such a wide variety of the way that these guys are ordered. You know, between Terry and Arnold, Quinion Mitchell, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Cooper DeGene, like, you know, those guys, to me, certainly all in play for number one. Wiggins certainly would be in play for CB1 as well. But let me know what you think about the video. Uh, again, my name is Zachary Smith. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell here. A lot more stuff coming in the coming weeks. Uh, and then after the draft, I don't know when you'll see me again. But it's certainly, I will be here for NFL draft content, free agent content as well. So, like I said, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>